Imagine that you have two charts for which you think, hmm, these kind of go well together. Maybe we should stick them together in one large plot. Today I'm going to show you how you can combine GG plots with a package called Patchwork. This package is very easy to use and once you load it, you can just take one of your charts and add the other chart to it. This will immediately give you a side-by-side -side view of your two plots. Technically, adding these charts together tells Patchwork only that these charts should be arranged together. It will figure out how to place it on its own. But if you really want to make sure that stuff goes next to each other, you can use a vertical line instead. And if you want to make sure that stuff goes on top of each other, you can use the divide operator. If you put your charts next to each other, you can use another layer called plot layout. In there, you can specify how the widths of your chart should look like in the end. Here, I've specified that the line chart is supposed to be much wider than the box plot. And similarly, if you put things on top of each other, you can use the same plot layout function to specify the height. And once again, here I've specified that the line chart is supposed to be larger than the box plot. But with Patchwork, you can even do much more complex layouts by specifying a layout via a string in which you use numbers to indicate where your charts are supposed to go. Here I've used four different numbers, so this means my Patchwork needs four plots. So we are just chaining together all of our plots, always line chart and box plot, line chart, box plot. And then we're going to throw in a plot layout function where we specify that the design for this patchwork comes from our new layout. And with that, we have thrown everything together into one large plot according to how we specified the string in the layout variable. But that's pretty messy. So let's replace our layout with something simpler where we can actually use hashtags to just put in white space into our patchwork. Of course, this means that we only need to use two plots in this case here, so we remove two, and then our new layout looks a bit nicer, less cluttered, and we even have some white space in there, which is additional room where we can put in some other stuff, which we'll do later. Now, let us revisit our plot from before, where we just simply put stuff on top of each other. What you see here is that we have two legends, one from each plot. We can combine all of these legends by using guides collect, and then we see everything gets moved to the center and all the legends are collected in one place. In this case, these two legends are kind of the same legend, it's just that they use different GMs, so this is why ggplot shows you two legends. So let's just remove one of those legends by adding theme legend position equals none. And by default, anything that we add on top of our patchwork refers to the last part that we added to the patchwork. So this means that here we remove the legend from the box plots. But especially with theming, you sometimes want to apply stuff to all of your plots that are inside of the patchwork. To make that happen, you don't add a layer, but you use the AND operator. And once you do that, all of the changes that you add later on will be applied to all of the stuff that is in your patchwork. In this case, we might even get away without having a legend. That's because the box plots already show you which continent corresponds to which color. But still, let's just have one legend in there anyway. It's just a demo here, so let's just roll with it. Now that we have combined our plots, what we need are some more labels like titles, subtitles and captions. For our patchwork, we can add all of that using the plot annotation layer, where we simply specify title, subtitle and caption just like we would in a labs layer in a regular GG plot. And once you throw that in there, you will get all of that stuff. But it doesn't necessarily look good. We will have to apply some theming here. And the way to use theming here is this specifically designed theme argument in which you can use the theme function that you already know from ggplot. One particular thing that you have to watch out for is that inside of this theme call, only the stuff that refers to text, backgrounds or margins actually works. All the other stuff doesn't work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Inside of the plot annotation function, just modify text, margins and backgrounds. But once you know that, you can just use all of the stuff that you normally would in the ggplot theme layer. Sometimes if you combine plots like this, you will want to have little tags in there like A, B, C and so on, so that you can refer to these charts individually. With Patchwork, you can easily do that using the tag levels argument. And you could also use prefixes like parentheses to put all of your tags into parentheses. Right now, I feel like the tags are kind of close to the individual plots. So let's apply a theme layer to all of our charts where we use the plot tag argument that works just like a regular text element and in which we can specify new margins. And with that, we have tags that are a bit farther away from each individual chart. Oof, we've already covered a lot of cool stuff from Patchwork. And this reminds me, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Thanks a lot. And now let's get back to Patchwork. 
One of those things that you might need at some point in your life is the plot in a plot. By which I mean not two separate plots, but one large plot in which a smaller version of some other plot is nested. In Patchwork that's very easy to do, you just take your chart that you want to add a plot to, and then you add a plot to it using the inset element layer, where you specify the plot that you want to use, and then you need to specify where to put it using the left, right, top and bottom argument. These numbers indicate where the left, right, top and bottom border of your chart are supposed to be located using a unit that goes from 0 to 1. So if the left border of your plot is supposed to be all the way to the left, use left equals to 0. And you do the same thing with the other numbers. And once you execute this, you will see that these numbers here correspond to the top right corner of our plot. But right now, we cannot see the plot that nicely, so we might have to change the theme of our inset element a little bit by adding a border to it and removing the legend, and this way we can see it more nicely. This still is a terrible plot to look at, but I'm showing you only the principle here on how it works. If you want to make something beautiful, you will have to put in some work yourself. What you can also do in Patchwork is work with a list of plots. Sometimes you have a list of plots that you want to put together and once you specify a layout, you can just wrap everything into the wrap plots function and then you use your design that you wanted and this way you get your plots from the list on the layout that you want. This kind of thing also works with groups that you could get from the grid package. For example, if your list of plots contains the two plots that you had before and a circle graphical object, that's what a group is. Then you could just specify a new layout where we account for the third element here and then putting this all together just works the exact same thing. That way you have a circle inside of your patchwork. I'm not 100% sure why you want to do that but it's possible but still we should probably put in something more useful so let me show you that next. Really one useful thing that you could do is put in a table in there using a table grub from the grid extra package. What you'd have to do for that is to replace the circle grub with a table grub in which you specify the stuff that goes into the table, namely a data set that contains the mean life expectancy that we look at in our chart. We filter for one specific year and then we make the names of the columns nicer so that it looks better in a table. And then re-executing all of this will give us a table that isn't that pretty to look at, but we could probably modify it some more but the idea of how to get the table inside of our patchwork is always the same. I hope that you can see that patchwork is an amazing tool that helps you to rearrange all of your charts in any way you want. For example, I used this in this video where I recreated a very complex chart from the Pew Research Center that uses bars and maps and I put all of this stuff together using patchwork. Check it out if you want. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.